This is a short video about what to look for and what to expect when you buy an Atomic on eBay. Now these Atomic coffee machines are not currently available from Bond Trading in Australia. I guess there's supply issues there. So I'm gonna open this up and let's have a look at, look at it. I would say is this is very well packaged and wrapped up, which is usually a good sign. Tamper in here, not that we'd ever use a plastic tamper like that. It's always good to know. Now first thing I notice is this is not an Atomic um, basket obviously fits really well but it's not an atomic basket that's not a problem because you can actually still get the baskets for the atomic they come in three sizes actually that's the standard size there there's a bigger one that we use when we're using the grinder so the coffee doesn't all flow over and there's also a very rare one shot basket which is half the size of that so the thing you're going to be looking for is is it a replica is it a fake um interesting badge Badge is in very good condition. I don't recognise that badge particularly, but that doesn't mean, in fact, I would say this is, I would say this is a replica. Oh dear, never in my life managed to make the mistake of buying a replica before. But um, that's not a badge I recognise. That's not how the tip of an atomic should be. I've got no idea what that bolt there is. And obviously that's completely the wrong angle. So I've been had. This isn't a genuine atomic coffee machine, I don't think. That probably explains why the, the jug is the wrong shape as well. The lip needs to be further out. It's really difficult to pour from jugs like that and plus you can see that indentation there there's on these handles there you can just about see there's a little nodule so that handle's being put onto a jug that it doesn't really fit well that is a shame normally i would recognize atomics when i see them but this is a slightly different shape as well to a standard atomic so this is a replica i was hoping to uh, refurbish this and give this to a friend but he's not going to be interested in a effectively fake atomic. The other thing is this seal here on a genuine atomic would be black seal. And one of the things with these replicas was the tube that ran down the middle was different and it should have a hole directly opposite there. A the replica would have a Phillips screw in here whereas a genuine atomic would have a slotted screw. Unusual for those screws to be snapped off like that but those are not screws that a genuine atomic would be using. That is a shame, but let's um, let's take this to pieces, see if we can fix the angle of this, um, and let's try making a coffee with it and seeing what it actually performs like. The other thing on a genuine atomic is that that wouldn't be rounded like that, and that's like a raised head screw. That should be flat, go straight down and not bulge out like that. We're gonna start off disassembling this by taking out the end screw there. And that should allow us to take that knob there off. Next up, we're going to unscrew this here. I'm going to have to do that off camera because that can be pretty tight. This here is not coming undone. So rather than just getting a pair of pliers on there, make sure you wrap something like a towel around that so as not to damage it. And then you should be able to get a pair of pliers around and undo that. I'll just crack that with a pair of pliers. Let's just be able to take that off. And next up, you're going to need to get a um, adjustable set of pliers around this fitting here or a spanner now this is where it starts getting tricky because it's very easy to shear the fitting there but as i say this is what you've got to do to take this thing to pieces these replica atomics are relatively new they've only been out for the last few years so usually you can actually get all of these fittings off should you need to actually had one of these and never taken one to pieces but uh, there's another difference that gasket on an atomic would be a paper gasket or cardboard gasket this is a silicon rubber gasket there this is also cut completely differently that would be a hole that goes all the way through you wouldn't have these sharp edges here and here let's try unscrewing this here and see what we've got okay. Two silicon washers on there. 
On the atomic kit, you would get three washers there and also a brass washer. I don't think there's anything else in there. I'll have a closer look. This fitting here on this replica is a silicon gasket, whereas it'd be a cardboard or paper gasket on an atomic. The position of this steam arm is a matter of choice. It's not supposed to move around once you've tightened up that fitting, but we would normally have the steam arm so it's actually vertical like that. You can have it tilted back a little bit like that to make your steaming easier, but we always have ours straight down like that. I'm pretty certain on a genuine atomic, this would be a brass rod, whereas here you can see the first signs of rust, which means that's probably plated steel. We've tightened that fitting up, so this is in the right position now, and we're just gonna screw this in with those two silicon gaskets. Once you've tightened, screwed that fitting in, you might just need to get a watchmaker screwdriver and just make sure that those gaskets are pushed all the way down there. Just screw this back over there like so. Shouldn't need to be any more than finger tight. And pop that on. And just tighten that screw up. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually still buy genuine atomics, not at the moment because of supply chain issues, but you can actually buy genuine atomics from Bond Trading in um, Sydney. So there's no need to overpay for a second hand one on eBay or indeed buy a replica one. Thing you should do when you buy a second hand atomic is just put some water in there and shake it around so you can get rid of any old lime scale. A good shape. See is all those bits of lime scale coming out here like that. That's quite a lot. It's quite a thick bit of lime scale. What you should never do with an atomic is use it and then store it with the knob on. When, once you've used it, if you're not going to use it for a few weeks, put it back on the heat and evaporate all the water. If you leave water inside, you'll start to um, you'll start to disintegrate the aluminium. Heat this process about ten times because you'll find that a lot of lime scale is knocked loose when you do it. I imagine the bottom of the machine is covered with about a millimetre of lime scale, which obviously won't help. Um, the coffee making process because the heat doesn't travel as well through lime scale as it does through the aluminium. Huge chunks of lime scale coming out, so we're going to repeat this with really hot water so we can get rid of some more. So can you tell the difference between the genuine atomic and the replica atomic? It's quite difficult to just look at those two machines and see the difference. Obviously I've pointed out some of the very obvious differences like the end of the steam one there that's sort of brass alloy on an atomic. This thing here is a very obvious addition there. Um, but other than that, and the badge as well, is the wrong font and etc. Other than that, it's quite difficult to tell. Once again, the shape of this is different. Difficult to see that, but it's slightly different. I'm gonna um, bang a coffee together and see how we get on. Before we put any um, fresh coffee through here, I'm just gonna use the old grinds from this morning's coffee to run something through there to see if we can get rid of some more lime scale. Use water from the boiling water tap to put in there. Speed the whole process up. If you wanted to clean all the lime scale out of your atomic, you would do this with lemon juice. Probably the squeezy Jif lemon juice. Get a couple of lemons or bottles of that, but I'm not gonna bother with this machine. So we're just gonna use old coffee grinds from this morning. It fits in the group handle, and this group handle fits in the machine. Just that, that jug is actually dented. I don't know if it came like that new or whether someone's just bashed that or dropped it. All right, on the subject of playing spot the difference, another difference is that this is cast much lower than that. That's almost flat along the top there where the badge goes. But quite a useful game to do spot the difference with the kids between a replica and a genuine atomic. So we get the first drips coming through. So far, there's no leaks on this machine, which is good. I'm not expecting to be making a good coffee because obviously we're using second-hand grinds. It's just that we'll clean it out and give it a good shake afterwards. Really unusual. I've never seen that before. That almost looks like the most beautiful creme you've ever seen. But in actual fact, you'd expect coffee to be coming out there at this stage, not that kind of um, froth, which is almost like a crema. I wonder why it's doing that. Maybe because the grinds have already been run through, they're much more compact and it's struggling to get coffee through, who knows?
Okay, the sound of the machine is changing. Now, there's not an awful lot of coffee that's come through there, despite the fact we put an awful lot of water in, which is um, slightly concerning. And the amount of coffee that comes through there is determined by the height of the tube above the base of the machine. But let's see if this steam comes out of this machine. There's no, no steam pressure at all. There's absolutely no steam pressure at all. It could just be that these holes are blocked, so we'll just get a watch make a screwdriver up there and see if we can unblock them. Yeah, I can see what the problem is. There's something stuck down there. All of this here, blocking the steam holes. You use this drill with a little bristle brush on. You get these from Amazon for a few quid. They're normally for Dremel, but these um, will help to clean the inside of that out. Looking at this grind there, it does seem to be a bit of lime scale getting through there. So what we'll do is we'll put some cold water in that machine to cool it down. And then we'll just take that top plate off and just make sure it's not all gummy. Make up. a new coffee. You always got to empty out the water, and I always empty it into the jug here so I can see exactly what is coming out of the machine in terms of lime scale, etc. Gives you a pretty good idea of whether your machine needs cleaning or not. Look at the amount of water that came out of there. That's crazy. What happens when we try and get that screw out? This one has already sheared off. It's normally an indicator. Oh, that's hot. It's normally an indicator. Oh, now that's just shearing straight off. It's not a tragedy. They don't actually need those screws in there. It doesn't make any difference. But um, and to drill out the uh, old screws and put new ones in is extremely important. So we just need to get a small screwdriver in these holes and lever that up. Let's see what lurks in this machine after all these years. Doesn't look too bad, actually. Bit of lime scale in there, that's what you were seeing coming through the coffee, but it's not nearly as bad as some machines I've seen. Whilst cleaning this, I noticed another difference between this replica and the Atomic. The Atomic does not have this series of holes around the top there. The hole should only be in here. Clean the top of this out as best I can. You can use these little um, wire brushes. Once again, they're designed for Dremel tools, but if you've got hard lime scale in the top there, that's the way to get rid of it. I've also noticed this here, which appears to be rust. Now, it makes me wonder whether the body of this is actually aluminium at all, or whether it's got something on it, because you would not expect to see aluminium rust. So we're just gonna have a quick go over that with some auto sole to see if that comes off. Wow, that's really interesting. That does not polish out, which makes me think that this is either coated with something like it's made of an alloy and then it's coated with something over. But um, I would say, I'm no met metallurgist, whatever the word is, but I would say that that is not made of aluminium. How bizarre. In fact, if you look here, this here, that's not a mark. That's like where the plating has been scratched off. So I wonder if this is made out of some kind of alloy and then plated with something that looks like aluminium on top and there's the telltale look at that made in taiwan <laughs> a genuine atomic these days would have made in italy stamped on the bottom the older ones don't have that clean this up as best we can put this back in and this will just lie on top and then tuck under the lips with a little screwdriver and that will keep that top plate in place that rubber seal down to the best of your ability the action of putting the group handle in there will actually compress that seal into the right place so we've cleaned this machine as best we can got rid of all the lime scale unblocked the holes we're now going to run through some fresh coffee first of all we're going to start off with some pre-ground lavazza rosa and see how that works and then we'll move over to ground coffee which tends to make the machine work at a much higher pressure and will reveal any leaks, etc. That before the machine is gurgling away, but nothing's actually coming through. We'll just have to see how it goes. It's just started coming through. Nine minutes. Okay, that coffee that's coming out is almost like treacle, which means there's not enough water in the machine. Now we put an awful lot of water in this machine compared to what we'd use for an atomic. So obviously this machine takes substantially more water than an atomic. As I mentioned before, each atomic machine has a tube that runs through it. And the length of the tube, the distance of the tube from the bottom of the machine, from the base, determines how much water you've got in there to steam. So if that tube was very high up, for example, you'd end up with an awful lot of water in there. And you have to have the level of water in there above the height of that in order to get enough coffee through, which we obviously haven't done on this occasion. You can't drink that, you might be able to paint a wall black with that, but in terms of drinking it, it wouldn't be that 
exciting 15 minutes on the clock there's still coffee dripping out of this machine but what you haven't had yet is the the change in sound that you get like the which means it's ready to steam the fact that that's taking so long has got something to do with the, the body of the machine is not actually aluminium and therefore it doesn't transfer the heat as efficiently I don't know but that takes an awful lot normally on an atomic once you've got the coffee coming through the process is very quick just a few minutes before you get to steaming but this has been going on now for maybe five six seven minutes the thing about coffee is the water has to be forced through the coffee grinds in a certain amount of time to get the maximum oils etc out the coffee this sort of water dribbling through like that is never gonna create a good coffee unfortunately 18 minutes so that's been dribbling through there for about seven or eight minutes and I think I'm gonna have to abort I don't imagine there'll be that's just not going to be enough pressure to steam milk properly unfortunately so we're going to try the same thing again as well we're going to try the same thing again um, we're just putting a lot more water in and see if that makes any difference at all. Lines can sometimes give you a clue to how the machine is performing. What I'd expect to see is a hole in the middle of the grinds, ideally. That looks more like the lunar landscape. I'm going to have one more go and this time I'm going to fill the jug right up. You would never ever do this on a normal coffee machine, but let's just see what happens. Well, the fact that that actually fits in there is amazing in itself. I'm going to abort this um, attempt at making coffee. We put as much water in as we could. Sometimes that builds greater pressure, but there's just not enough pressure to make milk with this machine. So I'm afraid the replica atomic is an example of form over function. It looks pretty beautiful, not quite as beautiful as the genuine atomic, but you'd have to look hard to spot the differences. But when it comes to making coffee, there is no comparison and I'm afraid this one gets the thumbs down from me.